first story. Entitled sister booked an appointment to get an abortion after I refused to give her my wedding dress. My bill is devastated. Almost two months ago, my younger sister 23 aka Lucy for this, and her fiancé held a big dinner event with all of our family, his family, our mutual friends, their friends, and every soul she knew, because they had some big news they wanted to tell everyone. They found out a few weeks prior that they were expecting. Of course, we were all very excited for them. As soon as everything settled down, Lucy stood up and made a toast to me. She said she was thankful for having a bigger-than-heart sister, like me to gift my wedding dress to her, since she is getting married in November. I'm only 136 and did not think I was actually fat at the time. I was shocked and embarrassed, and I tried to ask her what she meant by that as politely as possible. My stepmother responded, Don't worry, it's just one of those sister teasings you have never been able to comprehend, and for us to all talk about it later. It was all too much for me, and I was humiliated by everything. I burst into tears in front of everyone and went to the bathroom while my stepmom said, See, mocked me, and told me to grow up. They both did end up coming into the bathroom after 30 minutes, Lucy said. I ruined the most exciting news of a lifetime, but could not possibly understand that since me and my fiancé want to continue a CF lifestyle. I asked her much more rudely why the hell she thought I would be giving her my wedding dress. Apparently her and my stepmom had talked and decided that since my wedding was not until March, and since I am fatter than them, I would not mind just loaning my dress that I have not even picked up yet from alterations or buying another one since I had saved and invested with my big degrees in my wedding and could afford special alterations. I double majored in aerospace engineering and theater, and my fiancé majored in physics and philosophy. Thanks to my degree and skills, I designed my wedding dress. Both of them have always hated this. She also said that it's okay if it's not altered because I am so much bigger that there would not be any alterations needed for her to fit my dress. I told her absolutely not. Lucy then said that if I don't give it to her, then I am no longer a bridesmaid. I told her that's fine, and I left the bathroom. Everyone except my dad, Lucy's fiancé, and my fiancé left. They consoled me and said they would talk to my stepmom and sister about everything, and I left. The next day, both my sister and my stepmom blew up my phone, saying I was destroying the family and clearly didn't care about my soon-to-be niece or nephew by not allowing my sister to have my dress. I never responded and ended up getting a group of family and Lucy's friends on their side, harassing me on social media, phone, email, and in person for a week. It only stopped because my bill told Lucy he would be leaving her if she did not cut it out. Things have been quiet ever since then, until tonight, when I got a call from my sister saying, she has a scheduled abortion tomorrow for her baby girl since she can't fit into her dress. She then said that I could stop all of this if I just honored her simple request to give her my dress. This is where I am for sure not just wrong, but a major B. I don't care if a person gets an abortion or not. What you do with your body is up to you. And I don't blame anyone for getting one done. From my experience, making that decision is one of the hardest things to do in life. But, it did piss me off, and I told her that if she was aborting her baby over a dress, then she does not deserve to have any children, and her baby girl can be a gift from God to another person who will actually love her and not place fabric over her. She responded since I am CF. I don't know what a good parent is, the length of a mother's love, or being able to provide that to kids. I could never be better than her. I hung up on her, and she sent me a text with a picture of documents showing when, where, and time of the appointment. The text said I had until 11.30 a.m., the time of the appointment to change my mind. I called her fiancé, told him everything, and sent him screenshots of the text she sent. He said she had no clue about the abortion or the gender of their baby and he was going straight home to talk to her about it. They did get into a huge fight, and now my Bill is staying in our guest room for a while and, very understandingly, looks very red and swollen in the face from crying. None of us can sleep now and can't. While I questioned her moral choice to pick fabric over a baby, it's the same question I am asking myself. It feels extreme for me to be this protective over it at the cost of a baby that is wanted, already loved by us, and can be given a great life with a great father. Am I the arsehole? I honestly am thinking about just giving in and giving her my dress, but I just have to get some outside views and input on this situation. Any thoughts would be very helpful, and thank you so much in advance. Data has no consensus bot. But based on the comments, the OP was NTA. Update. Before I get to the only update I plan to give, I wanted to answer some common questions people had yes. I did end up losing my throwaway for breaking Reddit rules. This is a second throwaway to keep my privacy. I'm going to keep everything as short and sweet as I can. 
Yes, my stepmom and sister have always made fun of me for not being skinny on the same level they have been my whole life. It did give me some personal issues that I had to seek the help of a professional to overcome. My father has been very involved in trying to stop the issues they have caused. He has called them on their BS many times, but they always never listen, sulk about it, and move on until their next drama. My dad is religious and does not believe in divorce, although I wish he did, because his wife makes him miserable from the drama and cheating scandals she has partaken in over the years. My mother died when I was very young from throat cancer, and that is why I never mentioned her or why she was not there. If you need a sign to quit smoking, let this be it. It had nothing to do with bad blood or anything. Lucy is 23, and I am 27. Yes, she is legit pregnant Bill made sure the night they got into it. And yes, she legit had an appointment with the abortion clinic. Someone asked where my significant other was in all of this, and how he felt about it. He was just as upset as I was, and has never liked going to any event on my family's side, because of my stepmom and sister's drama. He felt the same as everyone else x10, about letting her abort it, until Bill came to crash here. No, she did not tell my parents that I had an abortion. Very few people knew about that because of their stance on this subject. My dad was very supportive and understanding, and he is anything but the crazy Catholic I have met in this world. My stepmom did freak out and wanted to tell the world how shameful of a human I was. Originally, I did not plan to update. After reading a few comments the night I posted, I logged out and got some sleep. The next day, I had tons of comments from you all. I did take them all in on what should be done after talking to Bill. Before I did anything, I wanted to get his input since this is his child and personal life. I asked him the next day about everything and how he felt. I am not going to share everything that was said because most of it was heated. And he did say a lot of messed up things in a rage which is understandable. He said he went home and confronted her. But she denied it consistently until he showed her screenshots of our text and call logs. She, apparently, tried to tell him it was all made up and claimed it was to show everyone just how much of a heartless bastard I was to allow harm to come to a child. He did demand to see the paperwork and took them when he left. He said he asked her if she was even pregnant at all, to which she said yes, and he made her take a test, which came back positive. He also asked her if the baby was a girl, and she told him she did not know. She was not far enough away to know just yet. From what Bill said, he told her that it was over, and that if she did go through with the abortion, he would send the text, call log, and a copy of the abortion clinic paperwork to everyone they knew, and would be fighting for full custody of the baby once it arrived. Lucy has called my work and personal phone along with my fiancé's phone every day, trying to see if we will talk to him and convince him to come home and take her back. And it's gotten worse in the past 24 hours. I'm not sure what went down, but he did end up sending everything to just the family a day ago, after she asked to meet up and talk about everything with him. My phone has been blowing up with people asking a bunch of questions and apologies for not stepping in to stop certain things in my life with her. Stepmom is not happy with Lucy, and is even more upset with me for ending a happy family. Dad and other family members are refusing to talk to Lucy. Some have gone as far as asking her to not contact them at all, even when the baby is here, which feels too far, personally, to me. The child did nothing wrong here. There is a lot more going on that I will not go into because of this mess. I also don't know if she did or did not follow through with the abortion. Bill is not staying with his parents and is looking for a place to move to. I am about to start counseling myself because this has kicked up a lot of personal things for me about my own abortion that I had and our wedding is still on. But we are now just thinking of eloping instead of having a wedding because of everything. Thank you for those who commented with their advice and helped me process everything as well as gave me ideas that could be used as a solution, especially Muntjack drowning. Your message really hit hard for us and encouraged my significant other to talk to my Bill about it, allowing him to get some of his own hurt out and think a little bit better. Second story. My narcissistic Syl thinks her wedding commitment is more important than my dying mother. My 42-year-old sister-in-law 38-year-old is getting married and has had very little contact with us before the wedding. Any contact initiated has been us visiting my husband's 45-mile family which is out of state and is a 14 to 16 hour drive each way. I have always gotten along with my sister-in-law, but this was a whole side of her that my husband has told me about, but I had never actually seen. My mother has been diagnosed with cancer and has had to have many treatments, including surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Before all of these treatments, we had to wait for a test to determine which stage of cancer she was in. When we were waiting on my mother's cancer test results, we would know in three days and the cancer test results could be absolutely devastating, 
and could let us know how long my mother had to live. Every day seemed like an eternity. During this time, my sister-in-law called my husband and me to ask us exactly which role we and our children would have in her wedding. She knew exactly what position we were in, and we told her on the phone repeatedly what was happening. At this point, how long we could stay and what we could do would be determined by my mother's test results, since we still had many months left before my sister-in-law's wedding. We did not know if we would have to be planning my mother's funeral at this point. We only had three days before we would know a lot more to give her an accurate answer. This was also the first and only time she's ever called us in 15 years of our marriage. She began asking us exactly what we would be doing at her wedding, what day we would be there, and how long we could stay. My husband and I repeatedly told her that there's no way we could know during this phone call what we would be capable of doing seven months from then, and we'd have a better idea once we got the test results. We repeatedly told her that that would take three days. During this phone call, she began getting upset and angry with us, using her sassiest and grainiest valley girl voice, to tell us that she needed to know by tomorrow what we could do during the reception and what our children could do during the reception. I do not know how to go forward with this woman after this interaction. She insisted on knowing by the next day and began getting very angry with us. We were really calm, and she kept trying to calmly explain again the position we were in as I couldn't fathom that she would have such an attitude of insistence in the situation we were in. She began insisting that she needed our children and us to help her set up chairs, serve people's food, and clean up after the reception. Overall, she wanted to know immediately what roles we could play in giving her free labor intensive roles at her discretion, so she could save money on their wedding. Mind you, we would be driving 16 hours to come serve her, while my mother needed me for help after having been diagnosed with cancer. I still would have gone to her wedding before this phone call and figured out how to help my mother as well, if my mother's stage of cancer wasn't as severe. It turned out my mother's cancer has since spread to her bones, and she is not in good shape. After the interaction, I do not want to see her or be around her at all. I am not even sure that I want my children around her either. My husband began getting angry with her and eventually raised his voice a bit and told her that my mother could die, which brought me to tears during this phone call. My children and I have all been traumatized by my mother's diagnosis. And now this. With sheer mental exhaustion, I cannot even gather my thoughts to think of what to do in this situation. Any advice would be greatly appreciated, and I ask that you please be kind since this is very traumatic for my family and me. Thank you. Edit. Thank you all so much for all the support and advice. It has helped me to feel so much more level-headed and sure of my decision going forward. I will not be attending the wedding, and neither will my kids. Thinking about the issues at hand, I recently remembered not being able to go to her college graduation ceremony due to medical issues for my mom, and she sent a card to my husband thanking him for all his support, because he was able to make it, just barely. She's never sent him or me anything in the mail ever. It seemed to be an underhanded remark. Thinking back on things even more, there have been times she has allowed her niece and nephew, whom she was babysitting, to throw things at our family when we had just come to her in-law's house after a long trip and allowed them to say some things to us that I've never heard come out of a kid's mouth before. I have obviously overlooked many things now that I think about it. My sister-in-law demanded to know exactly how my family and I would be helping out at her wedding and wouldn't wait three days for my mother's cancer stage diagnosis test results. She only gave us until the next day to let her know, and she was angry with us. The test results would have only taken an extra two days, and the wedding was seven months away. I am not sure how to proceed in my relationship with her at this point. Comments. Emmer 830. Good God. She sounds self-centered and awful. If you even go to this wedding who could blame you if you didn't? Your kids aren't free labor for her. OP, okay? So I am not alone in my feelings of shock at her behavior. This is good to know. My children will not be serving guests or used as free labor. I am sure of that. I do not want to go to the monster-in-law's wedding at all. Much delivery 72 and 24. I honestly wouldn't go. Save yourself and your family the stress. If she doesn't understand your situation, she does not deserve your time and help. Use the time you have with your mom to make memories for you and your family. At the end of the day, those memories will make the grief better once she's gone, and no one can take them away from you. Looking back, I wish I had made more memories with my family members who passed away. Regret is ugly and doesn't go away. I'm honestly sorry about your mom. I hope you find peace and time with your mom. OP, my thoughts exactly. We were thinking of just having my husband go since it is his sister. This has permanently derailed my relationship with his sister. I can't believe I have to even think about this right now.
Sangria 66. Do not participate in the wedding. Do not attend the wedding. Simple. OP thank you. I am not sure I want to see her again at all. My husband may go on his own to at least see his family. My children are not going to this wedding. We just saw my mother and exchanged Christmas presents. This validates that this choice is the best. I am not sure I want to see his sister at all anymore. Update. Eight days later. After finding out that my sister-in-law was not going to wait two more days for my mother's cancer results, I decided not to go to her wedding with my children. My husband is welcome to go if he would like to. He is also going to buy her a present. Well, my mother is dying and going downhill very quickly. I have now found out that my sister-in-law and her future husband have blocked not only my husband and me, but also our children 15M, 12F on social media. There was no explanation for this, and my main concern at this point is her desire to come visit us across state lines. She has invited herself and her family extremely unruly children included to our home repeatedly, and my husband has so far been pretty agreeable, at least temporarily, so as to avoid any arguments. Not only will I never have this woman in my home, but I am worried she's going to try to come to my mother's funeral when my mother dies soon. I do not want to see her or her family, and I do not want her to have any contact with my children. I am very exhausted right now and could just use some tips on the next steps. Thank you so much in advance, TDLR. My sister-in-law, who demanded answers for her wedding when my mother was dying and wouldn't wait two more days for cancer test results, has now blocked me and my two older children on social media and may try to attend my mother's funeral uninvited. If you think she wouldn't block us on social media and still show up for the funeral with her mother, you shouldn't be wrong, but you would be. Comments. Ashamed Cat 3068. A trusted family member or person from the funeral home who has a picture of Sil, and whoever else you don't want there to remove them. Good luck, OP. That is a great idea. Thank you very much. Fart Mr. Champ. Damn, your husband really stinks though. I'm so sorry dude. This must be so awful for you. I hope you guys find strength and healing. OP, he can be a great guy. He's not great with communication. Signal Wall 8th and 445. He needs to enlist another family member of his to relay the message to your soul. If he is not good at dealing with her directly. Third story. OP had enough of his wife's entitlement and threw divorce papers on her face. I am 26 and have been married to my wife Emma for four years. She was a social work major who I met in one of my general education classes. I explained to her that I was a mechanical engineering major. She then asked if I could tutor her in math, and that's how we began dating. Afterwards, I decided to get my master's in Japanese to help me gain more career opportunities. My wife thought it was a silly idea and said she wouldn't be funding it. So then we decided to keep our finances separate. It wasn't a big deal since I was still working anyway. I just had less free time. So she was making more than me during this time. It paid off. And I recently landed a high paying job. And with that came more stress due to my having to travel to Japan often. I've really been wanting to get into gaming. So I invested in computer parts costing around $1,005. Once I took the parts out of the box, my wife noticed the receipt and asked how I could be so irresponsible with my money. She assumed I still made the same amount. But when I told her that I made triple that amount, she began giving me the silent treatment. During this time, I began to notice my things were going missing. I wanted to go fishing with some friends one time, and when I was looking for my rods, she must have noticed them and said she had given them to her uncle. I told her not to take my stuff without asking, but she didn't mind too much because they were old, so I just bought some more. Another time I was about to go to the gym, and I was looking for my pre-workout. I always keep three jars. I luckily had a can of Monster, and that helped. I asked my wife when she got home from work, and she said she gave them to her cousin. I asked her to reimburse me because they cost $50 per jar. She said I made enough to replace them, and just ignored me for the rest of the day. One day, when she thought I was sleeping, she was talking to someone on the phone, explaining how she's going to move my parents into our house. She hadn't explained this to me. We only have three rooms. One is her office, one is my office game room, and the other is our bedroom. She told the person on the phone, who I assume is her sister, that she's going to give my gaming setup to her brother to make room, and that I'll get over it eventually. So today, I left work early to catch her in the middle of her plans. And when I walked into our apartment, she and her brother were placing everything in a box. I asked what was going on, and my wife, whose face was pale, said she was cleaning when her brother came by. I asked him if he planned on taking my computer. Of course, he denied it, 
So I went into the room to get the iPad we shared. And I looked through the text on there. And it clearly shows my wife telling him when to pick it up and to deny that he had it. I told him to get out and asked her why she thinks she's so entitled to my stuff. I have never yelled at her, and I guess this scared her because she began to cry. She ended up packing a bag and going to stay with her sister. While she was out, I picked up a lock from my office. Her sister texted me, calling me an arsy hole. I'm beginning to think I could have handled this better. I'm looking for advice. Comments. Lord Cheesy Beans. You're not leaving her over a computer. You're leaving her for repeatedly stealing and lying to you. Get the F out. No stairway denied. Stealing, lying, making major life decisions without you. Not being supportive of you when you decide to get more education. And then punishing you when you get a good job as a result. Not respecting you as a human being yeah. Saying, leaving her over a computer, is a ridiculous way to put it. Abstract Engineer 2000. The computer was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Mysterious Art 18838. Your wife steals your SHT, gives it away repeatedly, and wants to move her family in without asking. Do you really not know what we would recommend here? Judgment. NTA. Update. Two months later, after about a week of staying at her sister's house, Emma called me and asked if we could meet up. I agreed, and we met at a park. She apologized for everything and said she thought she was doing what was best for everybody. I asked what would happen if I just gave her expensive makeup to my sister. She admitted that she would be upset. I then asked why she thought it would be any different for me. She didn't have a reason and her sister told her how unfair she was being to me. We decided to give it another chance, and she moved back in. It was going well until she started moving her things into my office. I asked her what she was doing, and she explained how she needed the room for her parents. I told her no, and that's not happening. I grabbed her things and placed them back in her office. I told her that they could move in, but my space had to remain untouched. On top of that, we need to determine how bills are going to be paid. She called me a selfish jerk, and then ran back to her sister's. I guess her sister told her she was being inconsiderate once again. And apparently, they got into an argument because the sister refused to take their parents in and said she's tired of hearing about her problems. I agree with her. Her sister has four kids. Her sister called and told me everything and said that Emma went to her parents' house. I tried to call her, but she ignored my phone calls for two weeks. I decided I couldn't live like this, so I filed for divorce and handed it to her at her parents' house. She called and begged me to forgive her. I told her I wasn't sure if I could. She refused to sign it until we went to counseling. I refused and said she had two weeks to suggest that. So now I live alone. She still refuses to sign the papers. But that doesn't stop the divorce. It just makes it harder. Comments. Go to Softspite. So she didn't change at all, and was still trying to do what she wanted at your expense. Yeah, get that divorce done. She's a pause. She wanted to live with her parents and now she can live in their house. M. Suzag 9 Yulgu. Emma's inability to respect boundaries and communicate effectively led to the dissolution of the relationship. Sometimes, walking away is the only option for self-preservation. Additional hat 60160. I told her that they could move in, but my space had to remain untouched. You are way too nice to suggest something so life-changing on a whim. She is walking all over you and sees you as the Monopoly man or something. You cannot trust her divorce and get it over with. Make a list of everything she stole in case she wants to demand money in the divorce. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.